Phil, I just, uh, you know, I feel like we've got a lot to be thankful for. Uh, the season has been as much fun as anyone I've ever been around, and our players have made it that way. Our coaching staff has done a great job, and uh, the leadership on the football team has been tremendous. You know, we just, we haven't had any discipline problems. Uh, they've worked, they've done everything we've asked them to do, and then some. And they did the same thing last night. You know, we didn't play very well defensively the first half last night and came back the second half and you know, Alabama, I guess, to six points and 100 yards. And just so many things to be thankful for. The entire Auburn family, the students, the faculty, the administration, Auburn alumni and fans. It's, it's been a great season and one that will go down in the history books now. And, I think the game yesterday um, certainly established the fact that um, our football program is back in the competition. I think so. That was the eighth top 20 team to play yesterday. Well, I, I, a lot of, you know, I'd like to congratulate Coach Perkins and the Alabama football team because they were certainly well prepared and, you know, they played as hard as, you know, they, they could play. And, um, they probably deserve better, but uh, you know somebody's got to win, somebody's got to lose, and I'm just glad it was us. Okay. The Plainsmen, the Tigers, the War Eagle of Auburn. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson, along with Coach Frank Royals. And Frank Royals, as much as anybody, understands the various ramifications of this particular ball game. Keith, let me amplify on what you and Jimmy talked about earlier. There's a lot at stake today because they're playing for football supremacy of the state. And what this means is that one, this first, there's not enough good football players in Alabama for both schools to reign at the top. When one goes way up, the other goes down. That's true in the state of Georgia. When Georgia's competing for a championship, Tech is down. Over in South Carolina, the same thing. So Pat Dye knows if he can win this football game today, he's gained superiority and supremacy over Alabama and has a chance to compete nationally. And Ray Perkins knows he's got to stop that. If he doesn't today, if, if he doesn't win today, it'll be a few years down the way before he can compete for national honors. From the 29, and on the first play of the ball game, Campbell throws it just as far as he can throw it. Chris Wood just down there at Alabama, knocks it away. He had double coverage. People in very close. They're set up in a man defense in the secondary. It puts it outside to Bo Jackson, and Jackson comes across the 40. He hits the sidelines up near the 45, and he's got an Auburn first down. We have never heard of is Bo Jackson, number 34. We believe that he'd be All-American, maybe the best running back in America. Number 34, big, strong, 225 pounds. Very, very fast. Outside with it. Jackson gets a block on the corner for Lionel James, turns it big, and he slips and he tries to cut back at the Alabama 28, and the Plainsmen are on the move. Emmanuel King brought him down. The key to the wishbone is operation by the quarterback. He has a strong leg. He goes, the ball is loose, the quarterback picks it up, Mike Mann, the man throws to the sideline, the ball came skittering back of what he can do with it, and he's going to throw it again, throw it twice out of the first possession. He is hit as he delivers the ball, and it is almost picked off in the secondary. And Campbell sets up the throw. Pops it down the middle for his tight end, Ed West from Layton, Alabama. And the big tight end who has caught more balls than anybody else on the Auburn offense. Beyond the field goal range, he's pretty good at the coffin corner, but he just hangs this one up into the wind, and Auburn puts it down at the one. Danny Robinson, cornerback, downfield on the special team. Three to go to work with Lewis. Rolls in the end zone. Lobs a little pass out in front. Good to Ricky Moore, the fullback, and Moore. Runs him out of trouble and gets it up here. As Tommy Powell, safety had come up. Falls loose in the backfield. They were trying to pitch it out. Low Walter Lewis was trying to pitch it off. Lewis quick. Eyes hard. Almost picked off. Tommy Powell came in and hit Lewis. Coming back towards the ball. Denbrock turns up field. Lewis getting some pressure. Can't get away. They've got it. Brought him down. Ben Thomas from Ashburn, Georgia, the 270-pound junior, fought his way through the blocking. 
If we were to lose this game, it would destroy our whole season, even though we're 9-1 and one and already going to the Sugar Bowl. Uh, it, it means everything as far as uh, state championship or bragging rights, and it helps in recruiting, and you, you have to listen to it for a year. 36, the first threat of the day by Alabama. Lewis under pressure, gets his pass off. Pass is incomplete. Coming across was Terry Goog. Kind of a windy afternoon for him. And number 96, John Daly. Defensive end levels. Walter Lewis for the big loss. Swirling at that end of the stadium. Everything is good on it. Ball is up and no good. Wind kind of pushed it out knocked it down, and so Alabama is turned away. And uh, we became very close friends. And, uh, needless to say, I had tremendous respect for him, and uh, there's no question in my mind or any other people that have been close to him. Oh. Bo Jackson, as his coach was talking, improvises, goes outside, and what Bo Jackson with nine five speed gets outside and see you later. He goes 69 yards and Auburn takes the lead of the ball game. A big block for him. Chris Wood hit the free safety. Freddie Robinson took him out of the play, and Bo was gone. The people in Auburn say the coaches that Bo Jackson doesn't know how good he can be. He may be one, before he graduates, one of the very great players in America. Del Greco for the extra point try. The snap was high. The holder, Mike Mann, pulled it down quickly and well. Championship. Here's the pitch back to Perry Good. And Good carries for Alabama. Number 88 coming back into the picture for the ball as Lewis drops. He's going to the end zone with it for Jerry Jones. Touchdown! Handle. Outside. Lionel James. Block from Jackson. James turns to the 28. Go to the first down. They're going to need about three. Goes to work, hands it off inside, and did he keep it? No, he kept it. And number 99, Doug Smith, had a hold of him along with Greg Clark. And there's the throw. Gets away, and gets some of it back. Second down, call it four and a half. Campbell quickly to the sidelines, this pass on target. Clayton Buford, just beyond the marker, gets a first down for Harvard. 7-7 ball game, eight minutes to go, first half. Up the middle goes Bo Jackson. And once again, he did it on his own, pretty much. And it's Campbell giving the ball to Jackson. He's on the loose outside. That was a good, solid tackle by Freddie Robinson, who's 6'1", 170. Down inside the 16 of Alabama, as Campbell gives to Lionel James. And James trying to get outside, uses his speed. And picks up four for four from this distance. Mike Mann, the holder. Mike Mann fumbled the last snap on the field goal attempt. That one's clean. And the kick is good. And you've got five and a half minutes to go in the first half. Third and one. It's good. Oh, what a whack at the line of scrimmage, but it looks like he's got it. Lewis still got it. Quincy Williams after him. Lewis has got the first down. He's inside the 20. He's knocked down at the 14. First down, Alabama. What a throw. Lobs it out. No Carter. Touchdown, Bama. They stick it in the end zone. Woo, that's a big one. The pass is away down the middle. Incomplete, almost picked off. Good play by Alvin Briggs. Alvin Briggs is a freshman from Greenville, Alabama. He's a shirt floor. That's how strong the wind is down here. That's not going to get there. Everything worked pretty well, except uh, Van Tiffen did not get a real solid hit on it. Didn't appear. Out in the center of the field, before they go back to their seats, they'll form War Eagle, and it'll echo around the reaches of Legion Field. My first question, did you have a good meeting? 
Well, you never know till you get the final results. But we didn't play very well defensively the first half. We didn't tackle. Uh, we didn't tackle very well, and they hurt us with the weak side option and the draw. And Lewis broke uh, containment a couple of times, and uh, so that's why they got the 14 points. That I was going to ask you about that because when I talked with Ray Perkins, we talked about the option play and, and your outside people and how that opened up the passing game. Yeah. Well, there's no question that it's difficult to play the option and the pass at the same time. Okay. Hey, good luck the second half. <laughs> and that's logical, Keith. Lewis goes to Goose. He's hit behind the line of scrimmage, and he is knocked down at the 26. And Doug Smith made the play for the Tigers. The ball game, and obviously Randy Campbell changed the play at the line of scrimmage. Pitches outside to Bo Jackson. Puts his head down, splits defenders, and may well have a first down. Probably won't see anything fancy here. They need the first down. They just pitch it back to Bo Jackson. He runs over run over Scott McCray and goes on upfield past the 40 for a first down. Inside, final game, first down, and had it not been for Sammy Hood. Campbell to pass. Got Wood. First down. Out of bounds. Inside the 25 at the 24. They break the ball this time. Give that ball off to Bo Jackson. Coming Toward this side of the field, and he's going to have a first down. Mike Mann to hold it. Ryan Delaney to snap it. The kick is up, and the kick is good. And so the Auburn Tigers come down, are successful with a field goal, and Jones in motion, and Lewis back. They're going to get it. Fumbles the football, Auburn will not get it. Go all the way across the field and out of bounds. Gerald Robinson. Oh. Campbell keeps it, dives, goes to the 15 and should have a first down for Auburn. Campbell putting it up on first down, going into the corner for Buford. No. Almost only the hand of Stan Gay, the presence of Gay, perhaps. I'm not even sure he's up He's throwing into double coverage, something that uh, no pad dive doesn't want. You can see the linebacker, Thomas, number 34, covering him short. So now they have a deep man back there with him, Stan Gay, and Gay cuts in front, takes a chance to go for the ball, and just, let's see, didn't touch it. Didn't touch it, just goes right through Buford's hand. That fourth, that second down. You can see there that uh, Gay took a chance, went for the interception. Normally, you can put your eye. Dale Grinko, he's kicked seven field goals in one ball game against Kentucky. A tough six up for six field, and it's good. <laughs> and Auburn regains the lead over Alabama by a score of 16 to 14. Seven, uh, second down three, picked up seven. Inside, Ricky Moore, the fullback, breaks it loose, and he's on his way. Touchdown, Alabama. This is Walter Lewis gets away, throws it in the end zone, and it's incomplete. So Lewis pounding along. <laughs> Andy Campbell gives to Bo Jackson. Jackson's on his way. Goodbye. In your face. 71 yards for Bo Jackson. play and runs 57 yards. Jackson answers with a 71-yarder. This 
This is Terry Good. And Greg Carr hits him just when it looked like he might be able to bounce into some open areas. Lewis fumbles the football. Pitches outside to Lionel James. Jackson can't give the block to him. Bo Jackson put his helmet on Ricky Thomas. Unsuccessful. Alabama takes over the ball on the 31. He's hit from 29, 26, and 34. Take it. No, I don't think he did take it. What happened? The snap looked like it was all right. I think the holder juggled the ball again. I think man must have juggled the ball. First down at the 45. Lewis has time. Now he's going to run out of time. Picked up. 93. Quincy Williams. Second down, about 18. Run a draw. Nothing doing. Ben Thomas jumps all over Joe Carter. It's back. It's turned around. And Lewis. Back to throw. Quick one to the sidelines of the pass is incomplete. Thornton Chandler had it right in his hands and run. Campbell inside with the play to AG. AG keeps his feet alive and works his way to about the 35. But he had both arms wrapped around the ball. Get the ball to the kicker. Third down and eight. Campbell on an option. Turns it up field and breaks it. Randy Campbell out of bounds at the Alabama 38. That dive would tell you that Randy Campbell doesn't throw very beautiful pretty. He doesn't run all that fast, but all he does is... Alabama's going to make him keep the ball on the option play. He shows that he has good judgment. There's the end trying to make the pitch, and uh, King couldn't make the play as Campbell had just enough speed to go in and back out. Don't worry about King or catching the Cobras and get off. Alabama with a big run. Just got it all. He just barely got it out of there, and he splashes it out of bounds at the five. He's a good one at it. He's been doing it. Uh, Lewis rolling it out to the right, lobs it up field. It's intercepted. Picked off by Vic Beasley. And Beasley comes back to the 11. The ball slips right out of his hand. It's the number 81, Chandler, but Beasley comes up. Now, the smart thing that Beasley does, even though he's going to try to score, protect the ball. Don't give it back. Protect that football. You can see he's got it wrapped up real good. Bends over and protects it. Doesn't want to turn it over. 39 to play in the game. And it's Randy Campbell, the quarterback, keeping to about the seven for a pickup of four. That's Tommy Ag with the ball. No, nope, they take it outside with it and fumble it, and Alabama's going to come up with it. Ag had it, and the ball squirted out. I couldn't tell whether he really had it or whether Campbell tried to take it away and give it outside. Pitch goes to Ricky Moore. Moore scratching along. Is hit right along the line of scrimmage by Greg Carr, number 54. Lewis back. Down the middle, incomplete. There was an All-American collision downfield as Jesse Bendross and Jimmy Warren ran together. Campbell keeps it, turns it in the middle, and goes down about the 38. So they're looking at third down and about 12 now. Third and 12, it's Campbell getting loose on the option, and they get him short of the first down. He got around the corner in pretty good shape. It is fourth and three. And it's Bo Campbell throwing. 
That's going to get flagged. Chris Wood ran up the back of the Alabama defender now. Was the Alabama man blocking him, Sammy Hood? Or was it offensive interference? If it's offensive interference, it's a 15-yard penalty and loss of downs, which means they'll lose the ball out to the 45-yard line and give Alabama a chance. The play of the ball game, and Lewis back to throw. Can't get it away. Bat it down at the line of scrimmage. Might have been Donnie Humphrey. That slapped it away. All on the Auburn 45. Walter Lewis, a little quick one over the middle. It is slapped away and intercepted by Vic Beasley. He was intended for Preston Crawford. Slapped away and into the arms of Vic Beasley with his second interception of the day. In. Number 86, Preston Goffin is wide open. The ball is right on the target. All he has to do is look it in. But Campbell, Tommy the Powell. Powell, number nine, knocks it away. Now watch this effort. Well, they got a first down. That may slam the door. Randy Campbell. No timeouts remaining for either team, for that matter. And they just snap the ball and uh, get the clock rolling, and they'll be just as deliberate as they possibly can. Started himself much better than he did in the first half of this ball game. And they have just won their second successive victory over the Crimson Tide of Alabama. They won a year ago, 23-20. They win in 1983 by a score of 23 to 20. And it is the first Southeastern Conference championship for the Auburn Tigers since 1957. Pat Dye got his convention to ride off the field over to the Visiting coach, and he gets down to shake hands with Ray Perkins. They will be battling each other for many, many years. Well, I don't know what else you could want out of an old traditional matchup to end uh, college football season. We had a marvelous football game, bad weather notwithstanding. It went right down to the final minute before it became decisive.